What do you know? Another beautiful day in Florida. Uh, it's early right now, so it's probably gonna get a little toasty later on today, but oh man, the temperature is nice. It's like, I don't know, it's like beachy vibes. Like I feel like I should be going swimming or hanging out at the beach or something. It's just that kind of weather. It is definitely Crocs and shorts weather though. So even though we got kind of foiled by our incorrect ATI damper, if you guys didn't see that video, um, we're waiting to hear back about getting a correct one. So we're a little stalled out as far as what we can do with the engine itself, uh, but we still have plenty to do. Our smaller dry sump tank is coming in today. So my plan is to make the mount for the dry sump, the breather, um, and all that stuff and get that figured out and get the line routing figured out and all of that. Uh, and there's like a handful of other things we gotta do to like the car itself. We're doing some shop reorganization. I know you guys enjoy that. Um, I don't know how much we'll do today, but Ben got a bunch of pallet racking and shelves from our buddy David. Uh, so he's putting one here to move his workbench there and all that stuff. So we've got enough to do that whole back wall, which we'll probably be doing later this week. Um, but that'll be really cool because we'll have shelves, shelves, and then they'll kind of go over the toolbox, go over the tire machine, shelves, shelves, so shelves down this whole wall. A lot more storage space, a lot less clutter. Most of you already know this about me, but I hate clutter. I just hate, hate, hate clutter. It drives me crazy. It's like the one thing I can handle dusty, dirty floors and stuff like that. I just cannot handle clutter. I, oh, it makes me anxious. <laughs> uh, but before we do anything else, we gotta move a car. I just went ahead and uh, put the engine in the Miata. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's still on the engine stand. So we have our new dry sump tank, came in today. So it works out. Remember how I said, you're never out of projects. If you feel like you don't have anything to do, there's always something to do. So I was real bummed about the damper thing. And I was like, man, we're not gonna have anything to do. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna work on, etc. And then I thought about it. And of course, we can still do this. And it's easy, because I, I the problem is I get caught up with like, the order of operations, like, well, I'd want to get the engine in before I put the tank in so I can make the lines from the engine back to the tank and figure out placement, you know what I mean? Like, I, I try to think of things on like a logical time frame or a timeline, um, and sometimes that prevents me from realizing stuff that I can get done. So, this is one of those things we can get done, and it's a big thing. So, this was the first tank we got. This is like their full-size tank. Um, it was too tall for the trunk. Let me drop the car down, I'll show you. So, this is our old tank. As you can see, it is too tall not gonna fit in the trunk. The only real way to make it fit would be to cut the hole out in the bottom, which I wasn't really too keen on doing because then that puts the fittings really low and, and all that stuff. So this is the smaller tank. Much, much better fit. Like literally perfect size for this because we can bring it up to about here where we can still shut the trunk, no problem. And then puts our fittings above the like, tub essentially. Um, it gives us room to get to everything like the drain plug and all that stuff. So, so I'm really, really glad we were able to get something that fits like perfect. Like it is literally the perfect size for us. So we'll be sending this one back and mounting this one. Getting my, my cleatus on. Fun fact, a lot of people probably don't know. I grew up in South Georgia and North Florida and I had such a thick Southern accent when I moved to Central Florida, St. Cloud area that people were convinced I was from Texas. So these are the two things we need to install in here. Obviously the tank and then our breather for our tank. So my plan is to build an aluminum plate here. I've got a bunch of aluminum sheet left over um, and then just make mounting provisions for the tank 
and for the breather. Something I am noticing is my fitting plan is not gonna work out, which I'll show you guys when we get further along. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out a game plan here. We need to measure, draw up our plate, figure out where we want it to go. Do we want it to go up here and over? Do we want it to just be this square here, which I mean realistically should be enough. Um, how do we want to attach it? Can we drill through here and riv nut? We're gonna have to build tabs to bend back up here, etc. So you start figuring out how I'm gonna make it, start measuring it out and start cutting it out. Fitting wise, what I was gonna tell you guys a minute ago, is I originally ordered a bunch of inexpensive fittings. I just ordered a bunch of each radius. That way, if I had to make it out of all 90s, I'd have enough to do it all 90s. If it was all straight, I'd have enough to do it all straight. But, you know, with all nice PTFE line, PTFE Dietchworks fittings for the high pressure side, and the more I think about it, like realistically, the feed and return is equally as important, especially because it's running through the cabin. So. I changed my mind and I wanna go with nice fittings. The only reason for doing it that way was so I'd have everything and I wouldn't get hung up waiting a week for fittings to come in after we figure out exactly what we need to order once we've got everything ready. So fortunately, like the damper issue set us back and that sucks, but at the same time it afforded us the luxury to get the tank mounted, get everything kind of figured out and then order just the fittings we need so we can order the nice fittings. It's just hard to order $300 worth of fittings you're not gonna use just so that you have every different shape and size on hand. So this way we'll be able to figure out exactly what we need in order exactly that. So at the end of the day, it works out. It always does, it always does. There's always a bright side to every situation. No matter what it is, you just gotta find it. And if you find it, you'll be a lot happier. So, uh, yeah, let me come, I'm gonna come up with a game plan and I'll let you guys know what it is when we start uh, enacting it. <laughs> oh, also, before we get started, I wanna show you guys Ben's shelf. You got it done. Look at how nice it looks. There was something else. My dad's proud of me. Oh, there's something else I was gonna say about this. Oh, this car. I'm just gonna say, those of you like turbo Miata lovers, this thing's sweet. It's got this super cool, what is it, Pro J valve cover? Okay, you said turbo Miata lovers in his nose. Well, it's not turbo, but like <laughs> Miata lovers, whatever. It's got like the crazy dual feed fuel rail, the it, like custom intake manifold, the Pro J valve cover, or whatever that is. It's just cool. It's a cool one. It's one of the cooler ones you've gotten. <laughs> buy extra material because you never know what you're gonna need it for that literally is the same piece I bought for doing my expansion tank and it's on that my fan shroud tons of little brackets and now this Ben's prepping us for summertime hanging another fan okay moment of truth time will it fit looks pretty good we need to make our tabs for the top here so I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to figure those out getting them tacked in yeah, which weld the aluminum to sheet metal. Yeah, dude. That'll work great, man. Got plenty of room, though, to mount both pieces. Solid. All right, so let's start making the next set of pieces.
see if it fits. Damn, at that angle, like spot on. Time to wall her out. folks need to draw our holes for our rib nuts start doing that but not bad not bad i definitely might drill holes in it once we get everything mounted up and know where everything ends up um but i mean i'm sure it'll oh i can't take that off because it's holding it there i'm sure it'll look better when it's not just a piece of metal with nothing on it all right well the plate is mounted it was definitely very trying this rib nut stripped out it just like spun in the sheet metal uh so then i had to cut the tab off and re-weld it and then I bolted the top two in when I drilled the bottom holes. And then the top bolts didn't line up with the bottom bolts in, even though they were in when I drilled the bottom ones. Not the easiest project ever for what it was, but it's in there. It's done. She's stout and sturdy. Yeah, that's actually very sturdy. So, so yeah, next step will be uh, mounting the tank. All right, I got the plate back out. I've got kind of like my rough location marked of where I want to put the dry sump tank and the breather tank. So I just kind of have a general idea. So I'm gonna measure and just make sure I've got it all level and even. Mark the holes, start drilling, start rip nutting. Check it out. Got it all mounted up. All the holes lined up good. She is solid. Hyped. Looks sick. Can't wait to get it in the car. Figured I might as well try to put it in as one unit. Look at that. Damn, that looks so sick. Freaking dry sump setup in my Miata. So hyped, so hyped. Ah, oh, man, I just can't get over how rad that looks. Like, pop the trunk, dry something. Definitely should have like painted the trunk, uh, but it's a little too late now. I don't feel like taking everything out to paint it. Maybe down the road, if I really get annoyed with the ugly redness, I will paint it, but for now, it's fine. All right, so now that the tanks are mounted, I did want to make this breather line, but I do not have normal Dash 12 line. I sent it all back, so I ordered some more so we can make, because this is like the only line we need to make non-PTFE, but I ordered PTFE fittings and line for everything else. Um, yeah, so the only confusing part, the thing I'm unsure on, this is vent in. So like this is our scavenge in, so this is gonna come back from the engine into the tank, swirl around, come out here, go back to the pump, right? So I'm pretty sure this is from the PCV system of the engine. The confusing part is, I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to run it because since we have a dry sump, we've got a two-stage scavenge pump, this is gonna be sucking oil out of the pan. So as soon as the oil hits the pan, it's gonna suck it up, send it back to the tank. What that does is when there's not oil to suck up, it's sucking up air, which is creating crankcase vacuum. Um, so there shouldn't really ever be positive pressure, but I know that I'm not supposed to seal it. Uh, so I'm kind of waiting to hear back and figure that out. I'm just really unsure <laughs> about what, how I'm supposed to do that. So in the meantime, we do have a couple little projects that we need to get done. So number one, the drag strip and any street pool, my headlights would just fly up because we don't have any bracket holding them down. It took the motors off entirely. So I want to make just like a little simple aluminum bracket to go from like here to here 
um, at this height so that they don't flop up above like 70 miles an hour. Other project, another aluminum project. This is just the day of aluminum projects. So I wanna raise the trans up. What I'm gonna do is shim this mount down right here at the base and then just space them out down, which will bring the trans up a little bit because the trans does sit pretty low because of like the design of it. So I think we can go up about half an inch before we're just like slamming into the trans tunnel. One of those days where there's not really a whole lot I can do, so I'm just trying to find any little thing that, that needs to be done and do it now. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll do the headlight ones first because that's been on the list for a while. Gets priority. <laughs> Headlight brackets are done. Cross it off the list. No more 70 mile an hour headlights. You now got 150 mile an hour headlights. Maybe more, maybe less. Time will tell. <laughs> okay, now last thing for the day, make our shims. Spacers are done. They all fit pretty good. Uh, I stacked all three on for now. I think that's uh, that's probably about where we're gonna need it to get the trans as high as we want. We might actually have to go one more um, and do longer bolts, which we probably need to do either way. But it's a start. It's a step in the right direction. It should be solid. But yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today's video. Sun is uh, starting to set. It's a beautiful evening. Uh, so anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye. <laughs>